In Wildstar, all sorts of shiny baubles compete for your attention. Developer Carbine Studios, apparently unable to choose a single audiovisual style, squeezed multiple ones together, crafting a potpourri that's as eclectic as the game's narrative themes. You hear references to Star Wars and the Lord of the Rings films in the soundtrack. There are robots and hoverboards and references to Left 4 Dead. In Wildstar, the pop culture references flow freely down a river of science fiction, fantasy, and comic book themes. This concoction makes for an overwrought aesthetic, often beautiful and sometimes gaudy. But the world of Nexus is almost always interesting to look at, so even when you feel the grind while chasing the game's countless missions, you'll probably still want to push forward, if only to see what interesting sights you'll encounter next. The colorful and referential aesthetic pulls you in, making you despair when war spoils the beauty, even if you're the kind to skip past all the dialogue and just get to the action. The audiovisual barrage does a fantastic job of veiling the clockwork nature of the AI-controlled characters that engage in loud battles. I was invested in this war that raged between the Exile and Dominion factions as a result. Not every quest takes you to such interesting places. I spent more time acting as a wedding planner for talking bunny rabbits than I care to recount, and Carbine seems more concerned with giving you as many things as possible to click on than with making all those things feel meaningful. But you can still find value in the busy work, particularly when pursuing tasks related to your chosen path. Your path is separate from your combat class. Scientists keep themselves busy fixing robots. Adventurers leap to higher ground looking for artifacts in hidden nooks. As a settler, I collected resources and used them to erect various machines for giving other players health boosts and building taxi stands so that my fellow exiles could travel more efficiently. I liked knowing that these side activities didn't just benefit me, but the people around me. Wildstar makes movement and combat energetic and enjoyable. This isn't the first MMOG to include a double jump, but it's the first such double jump that has felt so free and easy, though the occasional invisible wall can hinder that joy. Nonetheless, Wildstar is focused on keeping you in motion. The combat is still built around a skill hotbar, but skill cooldowns are quick, and most skills are assigned an area of effect rather than acting on a single target. Skills typically emanate from your feet in arcs, cones, circles, and rectangles, affecting the players and creatures unlucky enough to stand within range of your fury. Enemies telegraph their strongest attacks with similar tells, and the most powerful of them require you to roll and leap around to avoid the red patches that designate dangerous areas. Out in the rolling hills and snow-covered meadows of Nexus, this makes for fun adventuring, whether you're on your own or tagging along with other players. In the game's dungeons and adventure scenarios, tensions rise substantially. In one dungeon, for instance, treacherous spheroids radiate from the final boss, temporarily turning Wildstar into kind of a bullet hell shooter. Such battles require you to keep a close eye on enemy behavior, but the chaos is rarely overpowering. As a result, these challenges are welcome outliers in a genre rarely singled out for requiring reflexes. Cooperative levels called adventures are the most rewarding places to prove your mettle, given their creative use of ideas not often associated with MMOGs. The War of the Wilds adventure, for instance, appropriates elements of MOBAs, unleashing waves of AI grunts that complicate your goal of capturing more flags than your computer-controlled rivals. Adventures are fun, and more vitally, they're fun to return to again and again. Player versus player battlegrounds are subject to the whims of human players, making them even more frantic than adventures and dungeons. Actually, PvP can get a little too frantic, and some battles require all of your senses just to make sense of the hodgepodge of the red and green arcs that crisscross each other on the ground. These capture the flag and assault and defend variants are fortunately exciting, even when the visuals approach anarchy. If you'd rather escape to a more restful place, you can take advantage of player housing. Your home is not just a house, but an entire floating island upon which your abode is just one element. You can plant gardens, set up healing stations, and even erect a dungeon upon your island in the sky, thus making your home a useful destination and not just a virtual status symbol. Some players have used the items they purchase and collect to craft jumping puzzles, Personally, I've approached my house as more of a dollhouse, spending way too much gold to decorate it. Wildstar's attitude is brassy and brazen. Its charisma has worn off on me somewhat, but I'm still planning to stick with it for a few months to come, if only because it keeps luring me onward with trails of colorful candy pieces. 
Wildstar is not changing the MMOG paradigm, but it makes a fine case that fun is a legitimate cornerstone around which to construct a massive adventure.